So you're hesitant about buying a brand new M1 MacBook Air, and honestly, I get it. The rumors of a new M2 MacBook Air are around the corner, and the new 2021 MacBook Pros have just been released. So today I will help you decide whether or not the M1 MacBook Air is worth your money. In this video, the MacBook Air I will focus on is the base model at eight gigabytes of RAM, a seven core GPU and an eight core CPU M1 chip, and 256 gigabytes of SSD memory. And this is priced at $999. And this is actually the exact model I personally used for the past 12 months. I'm going to now walk you through a day in the life with this laptop and how it has served me to be productive, be entertained, and also cause me some frustrations. First, I spend most of my time writing and scripting my videos in Grammarly. The beauty of this laptop is I can do that anywhere with ease due to how portable it is, and the keyboard is very comfortable to type on. Each key just feels excellent. I'm also a fan of the omission of the touch bar, which is still present on the 2020 M1 MacBook Pro. Sometimes, however, I do want to work at a big desk and I can do that with this laptop. But for my own personal setup, my monitor works only via HDMI. And sadly, the only ports on my MacBook Air are the two USB Thunderbolt 3 ports and a headphone jack. So my only option is to pay extra money for a USB-C hub and connect the HDMI through there. And because this MacBook does support Bluetooth, I am able to connect my Logitech MX Keys mini keyboard and my MX Master 3 mouse to help replicate a desktop-like experience. And because I've looped in my USB-C hub, I can connect my SD card, my hard drives, and even ethernet for a faster internet connection. Typically, when I am working at a desk, I primarily do video editing in Final Cut Pro, or light photo editing in Photoshop and Lightroom for my thumbnails on my channel. The M1 chip built into this computer is fantastic for all levels of creative work, but especially for amateurs or just people on a tight budget. And I wanna be honest for a second, I have been using my MacBook Air for the past 12 months to build this YouTube channel and this business, whatever you wanna call it, and I've seen a lot of success from doing that. You can personally see the kind of 4K videos I've produced and you can see the kind of content I've been able to make on this M1 chip, on this laptop, and I haven't regretted my purchase since. At the end of the day, this laptop was a tool and it served me well. And the point I wanna make is that you don't need the best to get started as a creative. As you grow your business, as your needs change, as you just learn and grow as a creative person, then maybe at that time you can look to Apple's more pro machines, such as their M1 Pro MacBook Pro that they just released this year. Okay, so I know not all of us are creatives. Some of us are programmers, some of us are aspiring to learn how to code, and you can do all those things very well on an M1 MacBook Air base model. And you can do that in combination with today's video sponsor, DataCamp. DataCamp aims to take you from beginner to pro in data science with their online learning platform at your own pace. Over 2,000 companies, including Google, PayPal, and Uber, use DataCamp to upskill their teams. DataCamp offers learning paths for all kinds of careers, such as machine learning scientists or diving deep into specific skills and things such as Python, R, or even Microsoft Excel. I embarked on learning the quantitative analyst with R career track. I actually have a personal interest in finance and investing. For those of you that don't know, my day job is actually working at a bank. The career track is 65 hours and I can do it at my own pace and all the courses are incredibly interactive and teach you how to use these new skills to solve real world problems. But let's say you don't know where to start and that's perfectly normal because DataCamp does have a ton of career tracks and courses that you can learn they allow you to complete a free assessment and then they give you personalized learning recommendations to get you started. If you're still not convinced, the instructors for these courses are at some of the biggest companies in the world, including Amazon, Facebook, and Nike. Use my link in the description down below to get started with the first chapter of any course on DataCamp for free, and you can start unlocking knowledge and career opportunities for yourself today. Thank you, DataCamp, for sponsoring today's video. Okay, so I do believe in working hard and developing ourselves on places like Data Camp, but I also do believe in taking breaks. And for the past 12 months, this laptop has served me very well on an entertainment basis, 
but also has kind of annoyed me in other ways. First, I love listening to music on this laptop. The stereo speakers sound great, the sound is full and rich, and if this is the first MacBook you ever plan on buying, these may be the best speakers you've ever heard in any laptop, period. And that's including Windows laptops. Second, the display is fantastic. It's one of the best that Apple has to offer today. It's sharp, color accurate, and vibrant, and it's proven through just how beautiful this video looks on this display. Okay, so the one thing that really annoys me about this laptop is its webcam. It's 720p. It's the same webcam they've been using in the previous MacBooks for the past like five to six years, and it just doesn't look that good, especially when you compare it to their newer iPhones these past few years. This looks way better and something that I would rather use for FaceTime and video calls. And I think you guys would agree with me on that. So that's the M1 MacBook Air experience for me. And it's been great for the past 12 months. The battery life is amazing. It's easily a two day laptop off of a single charge. And the fact that there is no built in fan in this computer while we do all the kind of work we want to do is just simply fantastic. However, there's this new rumored 2022 MacBook Air that's supposed to come out sometime later this year, and there are a few key takeaways about that product. It features a faster M2 chip, it has a redesign that is identical to the new M1 iMac that came out this year in 2021 in terms of colors and design, and also a mini LED display. So naturally, the question is, should I wait for that MacBook? 12 months from now or five months from now, depending on when you watch this video. And I have a bit of a different take on that. Me personally, I never think it's worth waiting for tech. There is new tech that comes out every single year that is better than the last version and makes the previous version even feel obsolete at times. Honestly speaking, from me to you, I think it's a waste of energy to time your tech purchases and buying decisions. It's conclusive today that the M1 MacBook Air meets so many needs of the vast majority of us. And I wouldn't personally hesitate for a second to buy this laptop if I knew I needed a new computer today.